As you probably know, Virtual DJ only run on Windows, 64-bit of 32-bit, and Mac OS. So, no iOS and no Android, meaning it won't run on an iPad and it won't run on an Android-based tablet. But luckily Microsoft makes the Surface and the Surface Pros, and they run Windows. So Virtual DJ will run on those tablets. And that's what this video is all about. So I got an offer for a pretty cheap old Microsoft Surface Pro 2 with 250 gigabytes of SD drive and eight gigs of RAM. And I thought I'd figure out how well it ran with Virtual DJ. So I got it and I got Windows 10 on it and I put Virtual DJ 2020 on it and it actually runs it pretty well. And it can easily hold my whole DJ music collection. And of course it can connect in, uh, to streaming services as well. So this is actually six year old tech, but uh, it actually works pretty well, so, like I'll show in this video. So the first thing uh, I noticed is that the, the font is really small, whereas I went into settings. And system. And I told it that it should scale to 200%, just for everything to become bigger and make more sense. So the next thing I did was go to virtualdj.com and get the, the software, install it, just like always. And once I installed it, I also attached it to the process bar down here, so it's always available. So now when I click it here, it simply opens and it's ready. So what's the next step then? Well, this is, is a bit hard to control, GUI wise. So I thought I'd change that a bit. So the first thing I did was I went into the display options and set that to grid view. And now it's a bit easier to see and grab everything. Okay. So if we go in here, period tracks, which is a bit easier to get everything. But still, it's a bit fiddly up here to use stuff. So next thing, well, well isn't there a tablet mode? Well, actually, in Virtual DJ 2020 default skin, there's no tablet mode. So luckily, the old skin is still here. So you can say like that. Oh, sorry, like that. And of course, you're still running Virtual DJ 2020. It's just the old skin on top of it. And then you can go into the layout and pick tablet mode. And now everything is much easier to handle using the touch screen. Another option would be to use a skin that's specifically made for touch. Uh, so if you go into extensions and skins and maybe search for touch, there's a multi-touch screen skin that you can install. And which has several cool layout types to choose from, like for instance this one, that works very well with touch. But in this video, we'll use the the, the old standard skin in tablet mode. So now we can actually try to start DJing on it. So I have a favorite folder down here, have some music in it. So maybe load something that's a little bit faster, like this one. Press, hold, load on deck one. Play it. And maybe this one. Load on deck B. Sync if necessary. Turn on the volume. Start playing it. And do a mix. Interesting. 
And now because we have the, uh, the tablet mode, the buttons are a bit bigger, so we can go in, for instance, do some looping. First time it's gonna send this. Makes it a little longer. We can have some user fields. We can see the waveform. Like that. So we have action, quite a bit of access to something that's actually usable with touchscreen. And then down here, right now it's on files, but we can do EQ because this EQ up here is a bit fiddly. But down here, we have much, much better, better EQ. So we can do something like filtering. Uh -huh. And if we go into circles mode, we also have reset buttons. And even temp buttons, so you can go like this. And let it go. And turn it up a bit again, like that. And we have the effects section, like here. We're flame to right now. We can run video and we have the pad section so we are back here because it's right now it's on hot cues but we can also choose lubro for instance like that so all the blue pad pages is here right here and we have the master pane so we have, right now we just have the master like that Well, since this is basically a laptop, um, we of course only have this one stereo output that we can uh, that we can use. So we are back in uh, an old school mode without a, a sound card right now. So we need the usual splitter cable if you want to do any kind of queuing, pre-fed listening, and stuff like that. So I'll put this one into the output like that. And I'm going to settings and then to the audio settings and say, well, we need speaker and headphone. I'm going stereo to mono splitter. So now it's automatically set to master and headphones. Let's try applying that. Then I have a speakers up here. I'll turn up a bit and some headphones here. So let's see what happens. So I turn this back up, play it. And I played the other side as well. And turn it down. So now we can't hear it anymore. But if we turn the other one down too, you can hear that the first one is still in the headphones. So now we have, actually have a split output, two times mono, but it'll work and you'll be able to do the queuing. So the splitter cable with the headphones works pretty well, but of course, this is not really the pro way probably. So can we use a controller with this? Yes, we can. So here I have a, a fairly old Relu B Pad 2, which is basically like any other mid-level um, two deck, two channel controller. So you have all the transport buttons, you have really good jug wheels, and you have an entire pad section, and you have the entire mixer section in the middle with filter control that of course in this day and age is color effects control in virtual DJ. So why did I choose this one? Well, it has a slot up here. What it calls, it's stuck. So it's actually meant for putting some kind of tablet into it. So that's what we're gonna do. 
Now, unfortunately, the slot on this particular controller is fairly small. So to run it with this pretty big tablet, I have to turn it sideways like that. And then it slides nicely in here. Then, of course, eventually it's going to need some power. So even though we've put it upside down a little bit, that still fits nicely in here. And of course, we also need to connect it. So because I knew it was going to be sideways, I bought it. this kind of USB cable for it. So that and also slides, slides nicely in. Then I need to set up the audio config. So we're actually using the BeatPad 2 and the sound card in the BeatPad 2. So because I already installed the Asia drivers for it, if I go into the audio settings, I get the BeatPad 2 button. If I click it, I get the Asia drivers and it's already set up for master and headphones, just like I wanted. So everything is good to go on that department. And it should be ready to play. Like that. And of course, mix. So that definitely gives you a whole other level of control or Visual DJ, even when it's on a tablet like this. Of course, it would be a, maybe be better if it could be horizontal. And if you get the Reloop Mix on 4, that should be possible because it have a, have a bigger slot. Uh, but you should probably just research how big the tablet are uh, and how big the, uh, the slots are on whatever controller you choose. Also, I find when using this setup that I want to use the controller down here as much as humanly possible, so I don't have to touch the screen as much, because that leads to a little bit of shaky performance. I guess you can get used to the touch screen much better than I am by now, but I really prefer to use playlists down here and uh, use all the pads and all these kind of things, and so I don't really ever have to touch the screen, or at least very little. Another thing I find is when I prepare tracks, I like to have a mouse and maybe a keyboard attached but because it's a little bit easier than using the touch when using with multiple tracks and using the the, uh, the finder or the file explorer or whatever. So since it only has one USB port, I find that getting a small hub like that one, which is very cheap, like $20, helps a lot so you can attach a mouse and a keyboard to it. You can actually get a keyboard for the Surface Pro, but any keyboard will actually do if you already have one. Also, I find that the on-screen keyboard is not always trustable. So whenever I, uh, I touch the search field, for instance, to do a search, it's nice when it comes up like that, but sometimes it doesn't. So I have installed it in the process line and it made the process line Swipeable like that, so I can always get to that, and I can always get to my sorry to my on-screen keyboard. So that's ne never really a problem to get that one. Otherwise, you might miss it at some point. Then that's the matter of the price. Well, the BeatPad Two is about five hundred dollars, probably, unless you can get a used one. And I paid about $300 for the used Surface Pro 2. So it's about $800 for this setup if you already have the virtual DJ license. So that's of course $800, but you have to remember you don't need the laptop anymore. So I think it's a pretty fair price for a very nice little tiny setup that fits anywhere basically and can do just about the same as with a laptop, even though you have to get used to it a little bit.